Oh yeah, this is super nice. How's it going everyone? This is Kevin. Today I want to bring along with me to talk about the Moments 20% Diffusion Filter. So let's jump right into it. So let's talk about the packaging. Right off the bat, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, the, the, the box itself where it comes in, it's, I mean, it is what it is, it's just a little box, I don't really care about that part, but let's talk about the actual packaging and see what the filter looks like and how it comes in. So that's how it looks, that's basically it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna open this bad boy. Has a little bit of a kind of like soft fiber optic, uh, whatever they're called things um so yeah this is the filter itself and that's what the filter looks like you see like the corners of it that's pretty cool stuff right there i think so that's just how it comes in it comes just with this um that's the filter itself uh looks pretty nice i like the the boxing of it and just uh the little letter the m right there that comes for uh the moment and everything like that so it's pretty cool little box i mean minimalistic which is nice because i mean usually a lot of people put them in their um filter kind of thing like this little pouch that they have so that's usually what i do i kind of keep all my filters in there so yeah i mean i'll probably use this as well for it just to have it separated because it is quite nice and i don't want it to break since it is uh, an expensive filter. Let's talk a little bit about the filter itself. Um, this filter is $80 on the moment um, website, I believe, and, and B&H, so you can get it there as well if you have the B&H credit card and wanna save some taxes and all that stuff. That's where to get it yourself. So if you don't know what the purpose of these kind of filters are, it's basically to diff diffuse the lighting and like race the, I guess, the, the shadows and the blacks, basically. So it gives it a little bit less digital look. Uh, a little softer on the on the eyes basically when it comes down to the video and photo and stuff like that with lights so right now if you can see that light over there's in a sense somewhat diffused just because of the surrounding of the light that it has it to diffuse it but if you have like a filter like this and the light didn't have that it would make it softer i mean i'll still probably make it softer in a bit so whenever i put this on there you'll be able to see what it looks like so we're gonna start kind of putting this on the lens and see how it goes so the first things first is that I got a um, step up ring to an 82 millimeter because all my lenses are 67 but I wanted to get a bigger one because I just wanted to kind of just step up into it so in case I wanted to ever get a lens that has a bigger thread size and everything like that I don't have to buy a different filter itself and I don't mind stepping up for it because it'll be fine so basically how this works is I just get the filter itself out and then you just thread it like if it would be like any other lens so just like so the sounds gonna suck but you get the point all right so we're gonna put the little filter right on the lens right here so we're just gonna kind of like screw it on there just so you see what it looks like now so now this is the video with the filter on so how do you guys like it so far can you tell a difference is the light a little bit more diffused if you will am i more i guess diffused and like remove some blemishes so that's pretty much what it does in a sense so maybe it'll make me look prettier i don't know so it's up to you to decide if i look better or not But yeah, I mean, I've been wanting one of these because I have a video where I made my own. If you've never seen it, I'll leave it down below to so check it out, how to make your own with like a cheap filter that you can just do it with hairspray. Um, so yeah, basically this is the more pro line, obviously. Um, it's not like $5 compared to like how I made my own basically. So this is a little bit more of the premium stuff. The built of it has been really phenomenal in my opinion. I really love like the ridges around it. It's just very, very pro-like in my opinion so far. So I really enjoy that because now you're not kind of having, um, what's it called? Uh, just it looking cheap or something like that. It feels like it'll last me a while, which is what I'm hoping to 
get out of this, you know? Because if you're investing some money in your gear, you want it to last for you, no matter how much you're investing in it. So we're gonna kind of put it a little bit more through the test and just show you what it can do with and without. So you can see the differences, side to side comparisons, and that way you can kind of see if this lens would be for you. So we're gonna do a little bit of light source kind of video comparison and photography with and without it and also see how it looks where like if you're somebody sitting near a light see if it diffuses it how it makes it look and just see what we can create with this little filter and see if it's something that um, I'll be using a lot or something that would be interesting for you to buy and want to get I'm also going to compare it to my homemade filter just to kind of see what it looks like and see if it makes sense to really invest that much money or can you create the same thing at home so we'll see what the the end result is i'm curious to see side to side comparisons to see if it makes a huge difference or not so let's go use some lights like that and get some videos and photos so basically what i'm going to be doing is just um, using that light source basically that you see over there i'm going to be using that as the light source for just comparison of putting the thread of basically the filter onto my Sony a7R 3 with a 35 millimeter, which I think it'll be on the equivalent of like 55 ish or so of uh, APS-C sensor because it crops in with the video. So I'm just gonna let it be cropped in because I don't really feel like doing whatever. But anyways, we're gonna show you the with and without. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna do the test without first and then with it, and then I'll put them side to side. So here is the footage coming your way. All right, so we're gonna take a couple photos now just of the light source and then we're gonna move uh, to another location in the house so that I can show you where, like how the diffusion of the light works on somebody and just kind of compare it. So here we go. So those were the tests of side by side with my homemade filter with a Cinebloom and without a filter. So yeah, what do you think about them? Can you tell a big difference, especially on the homemade and the Cinebloom? Is there much of a difference? Leave me a comment down below. If you do, tell me your thoughts about them. I'm, I'm curious to see if other people can see a difference at all or does it make that much of a difference? So yeah, I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. I'm actually just... I don't know. I feel like I have to see them on the bigger screen here shortly just to kind of decide how I feel about it. But side by side, I mean, they're looking fairly kind of the same to me, but I'll touch back on that one in a second. So we're going to use the light source in my room just to kind of have me sit next to it and see how the light hits me and what the diffusion kind of of the filter can do. We'll do one without it, one with the cinema bloom and then also one with the homemade filter that I've made just to see the comparison and how it looks. So we're gonna set it up and get to it. So we're gonna do the test uh, without, with the Cinebloom and now with the homemade filter and see how they turn out. I'll make sure to do one after the other and then put them side by side with their perspective labels to make it easier for you guys. And that way you can see for yourself. So straight off the bat, I noticed while looking at the footage is the filter itself from Cinebloom, like the Moment One, lifts the shadows better than my homemade one, which is kind of nicer in my opinion. That's the one thing that I knew was gonna more than likely happen because I had read about it, that if you do your own homemade kind of Pro Mist filter style, it doesn't race or lift the blacks and the shadows as much. So that's the one advantage that the Cinebloom obviously has. So that right there and all, it does make it a lot nicer just because obviously you wanted to just make it just more professional looking than a little bit, I guess a little bit cheap, if that makes sense. Not saying that it's horrible with the homemade Pro Mist filter that I made, but 
You can tell the difference in my opinion when it comes down to the footage itself from the Cinebloom versus no filter and to the homemade filter just so that it looks a lot more professional. I don't know, I don't know if you noticed that yourself, but thought I would have, you know, bring that information to you guys just to see what you would think and if you noticed that as well. One last thing that I wanted to cover with this is how would this filter stack with an ND filter on top of it in case you wanted to use your diffusion filter outside during the middle of the day to maybe try to do like a more cinematic kind of type of feel of look, you know, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to test that out right now. I have myself a variable ND filter right here that you're just going to kind of stack it up as if it would be any other filter on the lens because it has the threading on the front. That's what I was wondering myself as well if um, you could do that with these kind of filters with the Cinebloom to have my variable ND because I know like the Peter McKinnon Polar Pro has the variable ND with uh, Pro Mist filter kind of like the um, diffusion. So uh, I mean as much as I want to spend $250 on a variable ND filter with Pro Mist on it not really so i wanted to kind of figure out myself to see if that could look good or if it would wouldn't look as nice or anything like that so we're going to test it out and see what it does so this is how dark it looks inside and then bam i need to fix this up a little bit more actually because it got a little bit overblown just because uh, a little bit light out but yeah so this is the pro mist filter or the cinebloom filter i should say with my variable nd um, stacked on top of each other just to you know have both of them and see how it look uh, I think I mean it doesn't feel that much heavier or anything like that I mean it looks kind of I guess just like a bigger lens if you will I mean, it actually makes my Tamron 20 millimeter lens look like if it was a little bit more professional cinema rig style just because of the stacking of the filters but other than all I mean I'm looking at myself here in the screen looks pretty good I mean I don't know what you guys noticed so far right away, but um, yeah, I mean, that's, I think it would be a pretty cool system to use in case you're wondering how it would look for having your Cinebloom and a variable ND on top of each other when you use this filter. But all in all, honestly, the Cinebloom filter has been pretty great so far that I've gotten it. I'm glad that my wife gave it to me as a Christmas gift. So I'm excited to keep using it and use it for more photography at night with lights and everything like that. So yeah make sure to follow me on instagram if you don't to see some more photos with it eventually so it's at easy tire creative and hopefully you enjoyed this video guys but with all that said and done guys thank you so much for watching this video make sure to like and subscribe and share this video with a friend and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya